I've always been drawing. I've always been drawing. I was that weird kid who you would see sitting in the corner at parties with a sketchbook watching people and drawing them out. I, I've always been working representational till I moved to the US from India to um, be with my husband. That's when I started shifting and moving away from representational work, mainly because I was stuck. I was stuck in a place where I felt like my work wasn't able to capture the essence of what I was trying to express. Um, the essence of my experience or, or, or the spirit of it. So I stumbled upon Abstract through various workshops um, at the Art Center. I met several great Abstract um, artists who are working locally who inspired me to sort of jump into it and really explore various media and various forms of making art in a non-representational fashion. And uh, I've been working on this particular process and technique for about 10 years um, now. How did it come about? Well, um, I guess I'm having grown up in India. I have, I've been influenced really strongly by, you know, I have memories of the sights and sounds and colors, fabrics that we grew up with, the folk art, the traditional handmade textiles. And I guess in a way I'm trying to capture the humanity and the work that goes into creating that. I strongly see traditional um, fabrics and um, dyeing and all of that process as art and um, mostly done by women. And I, 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 guess, I guess where I am today, I've been questioning my place as an artist in today's day and age, my place as a parent and um, what my work really means and what it's going to express and how I can show myself in a truly honest way. And that is what I'm trying to capture in my work. I'm also a yoga practitioner and teacher. So um, I was drawn to this particular process because it's really meditative and slow and pretty straightforward. Um, I use fluid acrylics and a satin glazing medium, which is uh, an extender. I use shop cloth in different shapes okay, and stencils. And uh, I have a brayer, my trusty brayer, and some painter's tape. That's what I use. And most of the pieces you see here are not planned. I just go with a uh, color palette that, that strikes or calls to me, mostly reminiscent of wow. the natural dyes like indigos and, and the bright greens and the, the saffron, the colors that you would find in uh, the traditional hand-woven textiles in South Asia. So those colors speak to me. And then I'm really just focused on how each place and each color talks to each other, how the light travels through the canvas. And as I expose the substrate and I lift off the paint, I like to see what stays behind on the canvas and how the canvas then gets transformed to create these beautiful shadows, you know, a sense of nostalgia that comes through the colors and how they, mix. how they actually play upon each other. They layer on each other to tell the story. And I've worked for many years to perfect this particular technique. And every time I work on canvas, it just, it just has a new story to tell. Well, what inspires me? Let's see, I'm, I'm really drawn to um, art that's very simple geometric forms, um, minimal and really, um, meditative so i like to paint pieces that i want to see and what i like to have at home on walls and i really don't have much art at home the works of uh, agnes martin the indian contemporary uh, masters gaitonde vs gaitonde raza you know things like shibori uh, fabric collage this, uh, um, i i love looking at the works that inspire me and um I would like to think that you can see some of those influences in my work. Maybe you do. I don't know. What does my art mean to me? Really, I think I'm going to speak for myself as an artist. And I feel like artists find a way to express the spirit and the essence of the time and their experience as they navigate the world through their body and the one body and the one mind that they have that they inhabit in this in this lifetime. So, well, I do think that I have a sense of responsibility 
to express what I experience in this world. I feel like art, because it's so subjective, has the power to speak to people across cultures, to bring people together, to bridge differences, to empower protests, to bring equality. And there's something about and beyond all of us as humans. And that, that is really what brings me to my studio every morning. Just the act and the process of painting for me is meditation. Mm -hmm. The series that I, um, within, this, within this particular um, show, a couple of paintings that do stand out for me personally are um, the saris. There's uh, three of them in here. And these were not really, I, I did make a conscious effort to create patterns that looked like saris, I guess. I am nostalgic about um, the days when saris used to be more of... I just love everything about what a sari symbolizes. At the same time, I'm trying to capture what it means to be for a woman because it's such a powerful symbol of gender stereotyping. And I had to be able to create pieces and look at them and remember what those days were like. You know, so, saris used to be so commonly worn. Wow. I don't own many of them. I have a handful, a few, hand-woven, hand-made. But the process of making a sari has always been something very grounding to me. They're woven on these large looms, silk, cotton, a combination of the two. Each part, each part of the country has a different style. Yeah. They have these master weavers who are known for their works and people travel from across the country to buy some of their works. And for me, a sari was a symbol. It's always been a symbol of femininity and beauty and charm and earthiness and power. And um, I really enjoyed working on these series. They're more geometric. They're more um, symmetric. There's, there's a sort of, there's a sense of harmony and rhythm and repetition that I enjoy in these pieces a lot, a lot. Um, the temple piece also, um, I would say, goes into this sort of sub-series. I'm really drawn to the colors, I'm really drawn to um, the stripes, and there's just, just the spirit of what the sari stands for, and I feel like there may be another show in the making, um, just exploring the different uh, styles of saris around the country. And these are mostly from just my memories of growing up and the saris that I've seen, <laughs> um, you know, seen in my lifetime of living, uh, yeah, living in India.